When we say structure, we tend to think of organizational structure, lines and boxes, hierarchies, other forms of organizational structure. And when we say those things, most of us tend to cringe. The two most famous jazz chords in piano history. I like to believe I know what a good organization looks like and a bad organization looks like. And Frank tells me, actually, you never really know until you understand the principles of jazz applied to organizations. G flat. I'd like you all to just close your eyes and listen and, and pick one note. A lot of people flat. don't understand what's happening when jazz bands are improvising. Here's what you picked. B flat. Sometimes people think that jazz is just pulling notes out of thin air, making things up as you go along. There is a structure to jazz. And what I'm talking about are the chord changes to a song. There are these minimal constraints that allow musicians to coordinate through time. What makes jazz work, and this is the secret, it's a skill I call provocative competence. Note, it's competence. It's not just provocation. It's the ability to use the structures of an improvisation group to provoke competence in others and do so competently. It means I take what you offer and advance it. We tend to structure things with an inch of their lives. You end up with a bunch of frustrated people who hate the structures the organization and we as managers of it put in place. Letting go is an art. And what helps it work is this minimal structure. We call it comping. It's short for a company. If the saxophone player is turned to solo, if you're playing piano and you're comping, your entire mission in life is to make that person brilliant. Here's a tune that Sonny Rollins wrote based on these four chords. Can you imagine an organization's performance evaluation that says, how well were you a catalyst for someone else's brilliance? When did your presence make a difference for someone else to articulate a creative idea? When did you support on a project even though you didn't get credit? Jazz offers a good lesson with that. How to unlearn, how to step back, how to accept errors. Does this sound familiar to anybody? That's okay. You ready? not easy. But the beauty of it is that people who've played in jazz for a long period of time know how to do it. And most of those principles, if not all, analogously carry over into our working world. So you're hearing all these utterances, musical utterances happening and you have to take action, and you have to do it in public with no guarantee that what you choose is the right way to go. And you're doing it in a context where everybody else is facing the same challenge. That's a job description of a jazz musician. It's also what executives face now. I want our students not to just be good at entering and managing the hierarchy. I want our students to be good at managing collaboration. The complex situations of the world require higher and higher levels of collaboration. That's not the clean lines and boxes of an organizational chart. That's the messiness of a jazz band trying to get things done and make beautiful music.